So many questions answered. Jerry the Butcher's favourite fermented meat. The town crazy's real name. Remy even told me where his preferred closet in Night Star was. But the only question that matters remains. Who killed Kenneth? Jessica Cordry was a shy girl with self-confidence so low it laid beneath the white donkey wrapped in a comfort blanket. If only Derek Blink could roll up inside it with her. But the girl was just so uninteresting. Unless the murder of a loved one could supply conversational ammunition of utmost interest to the sheriff. Hmm, possibly. Philip Robbins longed to escape his suffocation as sitter of the speakeasy, to see the income of a business in his personal funds rather than that of another's lockbox, his ear to the ground of Nightstar, capturing knowledge of its residents' inebriated secrets, gathered the exact means necessary to execute a murderous heist most flawless. Or, so Rayna says, Raina Bilson was the Hamlet's most embittered drunk, washing the burns of her and her husband's spectacular failure in the New York stock market before said burns would become fashionable. With her nose in everyone's business, she smelled blood, stuffed inside the mattress of Nightstar's most successful entrepreneur. Perhaps? Gordon Calloway was pathetic and could only hold a note when one was written to him as a plea to stop playing his songs, unless he had a haunting topic that would allow him to write a good one. Jerry the Butcher took great pride in his title, looking to utilize his craft upon the very cousin that had abandoned him. The outsiders, Trib, Kemp, and Burke arrived the exact same night of a murder during a storm of rain and panic that would push them to desperation, hot off the heels of killing a fellow stock trader in their home borough of Manhattan. Remy Samuel rolled through Nightstar like a cotton candy storm cloud. Like all the truly depraved, he relished in the construction of a soft, gentle mask. The respect he'd reaped speaks for itself. He offered his investigative services like a true narcissist, gleefully outfoxing the detective two steps behind him. Or everyone in Nightstar worked closely together to carry out the first disturbance in their tight-knit hamlet against their wealthiest, most senior resident for the spoils. Or the power, or perhaps the victim held them in a stranglehold from which they aimed to break free. <sighs> which would I prefer to discover? That every possible solution makes perfect sense? Or makes none? The Night Star Spectres. Part 3 All Hallows Eve. Get in here. Amongst the trees. Let go, you brute. I'm trying to tell you what happened with Philip. Whose friends could be anywhere near the tree line. I demand discretion. Go. In Tin Tan, there's a back door you may have noticed. Of course I did. Immediately. A little after those stock traders left with Kenneth, Philip went and slipped out that back door. You say slipped as though he were deliberately trying to be subtle, trying to hide something. It was just the way he did it. Like he was in a rush and looking over his shoulder. Never seen that from him. When he came back, he came in through that door and got working again. Oh, I looked at him, and he looked away, all guilty. It was real quiet all night after that. And your mind draws the conclusion that he's a murderer? You use your mind. I just use my gut. If you haven't noticed, he doesn't really belong around here, but sure got to know everyone real quick. Same for you, except you're elderly. You're a son of a bitch. I am trying to- Settle down, Bilson. I'm pressing you because I want more answers. I don't deny the possibility. 
I honestly find it likely. But when you come to me with such a definitive solution devoid of evidence, it leads me to suspect that you may have reason to rush closure to this investigation. Well, sure, wouldn't you want this to be over with if you lived here? I want it to end more than anyone because I don't live here. But I want it to end justly, not rushedly. Say whatever it is you've been meaning to say. So, uh, is there a reward for these kind of tip-offs? I am leaving these woods. See yourself out. I guess you don't want any more of the information I got. Drown your prejudiced assumptions with another bottle of gin, booze hound. How do you do it, Greta? I'm trying my best. Falling apart. But your flower arrangement looks so good and well put together. Mm. I don't mean to distract you. Maybe Jessica had a good point. Take care of your real problems first. Just wish I knew how. Everybody, everybody in pain. What's your pain? Oh, watch. Look. No listen. Till now. If it makes you feel better, that's their loss. Their loss, their pain. <laughs> Too much. No sleep. I couldn't if I tried. I'm starving. It's got me on edge. I'd rather sit outside in the overcast today. As far as anyone else is concerned, I'm not here. Remy Samuel? <gasps> I slept in this morning and need to speak to someone of sound mind. Greta? Yes, sound mind. I'm dismissing you. Remove yourself. Okay. I think we should chase that thread on the connection between Randall Tribb and Victor Moreau. They had a conversation moments before the murder, and that fact cannot be ignored, no matter how much Trib would like for it to be. Or how much I would like for it to be, for that matter. I still don't know who Moreau is, Detective. Really? He's only the most brilliant... <clears throat> he's a scientist who resides about 25 kilometers west of here. And the sheriff tells me he's constructed a new invention for which he'll be seeking investors hot off the New York train right here in Nightstar, just two days from now. Why not wait till he comes here, then? No, no. I have to talk to him right away. You stay here and investigate Philip while I make the trip his way. Do you know him or something? I don't. Not yet. But I hope to soon, if he doesn't mind. I'll be back by tomorrow. Report to me upon my return. Wait. Investigate Philip? Oh, apologies. I'm still disoriented. He has something going on in the back room of the speakeasy. Find out what. Record it to a notebook at the very least. You think Philip could be a... a bad guy? Who does bad things? Anything is possible. I'm glad to see you excited by the notion. It's an opportunity. I thought Philip was good, but it seems like the goodest thing he's done is haven't been bad enough for me to stay good after the bad thing I'm about to do. Might as well be him. Oh, Trib, I wanted to talk to you. Looks like everyone does. First blink, now you. You two'd get along. Both are awake all night and can't shut up. I didn't notice. I noticed you stopped folding handkerchiefs for the bedrooms. Well, like you said, you never had elephants at home. No one does. That's what makes it a nice gesture for someone when they're traveling, Remy. That's your name, right? That's right, Remy. Okay. You sound disappointed. You remember my name. Why would anyone be disappointed about that? Well, because you seem like a prick who would want people to think you don't care about them. Damn, bud. I didn't peg you for the resentful type. You need to work on your people skills. Then I'll just be straight and ask you about Victor Moreau. I'd rather ask you. Guy's impossible to get a hold of. I'm looking to show him what true loyalty looks like by the time he comes to Nightstar this week, in comparison to the loose lips he keeps around here now. Are you saying you want him to give you a job? Of course I... Wait, how do you even know who Moreau is? You never gave the full skinny, but you've talked about him a lot. I definitely haven't. But I'm sure that detective from the city has. So as long as you're still talking to him, you're not talking to me. My initial arrival to the Moreau base is one of confusion. I can only assume an experiment went awry, scattering pieces with which the scientists' inventions were made up. But there they lay, loose upon the property, decorative scrap metal. Then the sound of a crash attracts my attention, and I rush to Moreau's aid, which turns out to be... Hey. Unessential. 
If you're here for a tour, you'll have to give me 10 minutes and a handful of cash. Most denominations will do, not all currencies. Then we can be on our way through my mind's mechanical manifest. Mr. Moreau, I'm Detective Willow. I phoned you about the investigation I'm conducting. Right, 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 right. I get a lot of those. Calls, I mean. You should have told me. Interrupting is warmly welcomed here at the Moreau Workshop. I've got the time if you want to make yourself comfortable. Looking around here, that may be harder than I would have previously expected. That first time visitor to a workshop. Things get messy, so they come in all shapes and sizes, but mostly this one. They come in this shape and this size. Bond shaped. I thought you weren't here for the tour. Yes, I'm here because I'm investigating a murder. Possibly linked to the Manhattan murder, but I've yet to land on that conclusion. Recall for me what you were doing on the evening of October 28th. <laughs> oh, am I a suspect? Not yet. Honesty, we'll keep it that way. I had just disposed of a bad prototype for the next step in American transportation. And then I took a call from a potential investor, but he was more interested in getting a traditional vehicle. He boasted about all his money he couldn't wait to not spend on this request. We said goodbye and I stayed up working right in here. I'm sorry, of what transportation developments do you speak? I built a hover bike. It almost is a hover bike. I can get it running for a few minutes, but I'll really get it into vrooming shape once I pull more of those damned investors. Can you believe it? People flying around, no wear and tear on the roads, nothing and nobody being run over. Accidentally, at least. Any human would be a pilot. Airborne. All the time. Ah, you bet your sweet bottom dollar ass. Is there anything else you wanted to know about that night? Oh, yes. The man on the telephone. Did he happen to be Randall Tribb? He did happen to be, you're right. He would later call me back, over and over, trying to negotiate a deal to trade work instead of just pay me for the car. And did you find anything suspicious about his behavior? If <laughs> by suspicious you mean in the sense of hiding something, no. He was pretty eager to yap about all of his misdeeds and intended violence was mercifully not among them. So he's the suspect. You know how it is, sir. Everyone is, until otherwise cleared. So who got gutted? Someone important, I'm deducing? Are you familiar with Kenneth Cordry? Can't say I am. You aren't, or you simply can't say you are. Ooh, smart response. You're a good detective. No, I'm just not familiar with him. He's a pillar of Nightstar, the same one you're presenting to this week. Presenting in. I've been soliciting high profile lads for that case. Lots of money, lots of media. I'd hope to keep the press away from another blood sucking incident, but if it helps, then it helps. Blood sucking. Is that how your guy died? You have a you have a Nosferatu over there? <laughs> I'm rather certain there are no vampires in Nightstar. My confidant was adamant in assuring me of such. That sounds like something one of those vampires would say. Uh ha ha, you're teasing. I don't know if you've yet visited, but it's a rather vacuous hamlet northwest of the Hudson. It sounds like it's filled with intrigue to me. Right. Tramps vacuous was the wrong word. But it sounds nice, and I respect that. You won't find much pushback from people up here. They'll think you brilliant in how you say what you say, even if its content is vacuous. That's such a brilliant observation. I was just recently observing the Night Stallions as they performed their religious ceremonies. It was all a silly effort to quell. Okay, are you talking about a funeral, or do they put on robes and sacrifice a goat? I guess either one's valid. People need to process things however they can. Ah, uh, you approve of the self-delusion. Approve? Who doesn't take part in self-deluding, Willow? It's exactly how we make the unreal real. Do you have any more questions or observations or thoughts about that bloodsucking? What exactly do you mean by that? Making the unreal real. No one has ever become what they've wanted to be naturally, and you won't convince me otherwise. I wanted to build a portable jail cell, like a cage on wheels, but with more security. So I tried to build it with what I had, and I failed. But it was okay, because I sought out a loan from investors, and when I saw the shade of doubt cast over their eyes, I insisted that I'd discovered something phenomenal that would only require some minor fiscal resources for completion. And I used jargon, I exaggerated my experience, the extent of my progress, and... Well, now you're standing three feet away from the final fully funded product. I'll be. And you didn't know how you'd build this before the loan? Well, of course not, but I made it a reality through willpower. Through self-delusion? At first. I didn't need to convince myself before I convinced them, after all. And now I'm doing it again. I'll let you in on this. I'm expanding from technology to biology. 
As far as I'm concerned, I can't say I'm a man of science until I master both fields. Unless I say it out loud. Technology to biology. Pardon my ignorance. Sure. But is that not like an engineer becoming a medical doctor? Ah, that's just another part of what's so impressive about it, right? Sure. Absolutely. So, what else would you like to know? I'm sure you wouldn't have come all the way out here if you didn't have an avalanche of questions. I have so many questions. Dancing at that moving picture ball. Looking a little gray, Remy. Should catch them rays for once. I just need blood. I just need it flowing in me. Care to elaborate? What? This is why I don't talk to sober people. Come back when you're on the verge of vomiting, like a real conversationalist. Philip, where are you? Philip Robbins, I need thusly know your houseabouts. I thank you, but never thus to your face. Is that supposed to be Willow? Don't tell him. Only if you promise to do it again. Never again. Never serve Randall Tribb again. The guy's a drunken loon and his liquor stub is phony. If you serve him, your activity is legal as his. Is that clear? Do you invest in one of his pumpy dumps? What? Tripp's been making moves since before we came around here. You wouldn't be the first he screwed. He did nothing to me but waste my time ranting and raving about some blood-sucking monster stalking him. I had to answer three calls about him scaring the hell out of people today. So again, is that clear? Crystal, I'll keep him sober. Can I get you anything? Liquid, I mean. <laughs> okay then, feeling thirsty? Yes, but that can wait. I have to take a look at the back of the tin, t back room, back room of the tin tan. I promised to help Willow with the case. And we realize it's the one spot most people in Nightstar aren't familiar with. Oh yeah? I can help you with that. Kenneth was here the night he died. So he could have went back there for all I know. I can't wait to go see it. So, so yes, detective, I, yeah, I think I would say I prefer the new creamier version of peanut butter over the crunchy. Yes, I knew it. It's the only way people will be eating it once confectioners learn how to fuse it with chocolate properly, or they learn how to market its superiority. Well, people are allowed to have their preferences. Creamy, crunchy, some contacts of mine make their own cocaine. Of course, of course. I was just going to say, there's no objectivity in taste beyond that which is deemed by the will of the taste makers. Uh, wow. Is that what we are? <laughs> taste makers? If you're speaking figuratively now, as to say, those deserving positions of power, or those who set our norms, I'll be straightforward and say yes we live in a free country where anyone can and will always try to appoint themselves an authority on truth or what an our reality is. If that's the case, that role as an authority may as well be occupied by those of us who already seek truth out every day. So we find avenues to broadcast those daily lessons and developments to the people who don't care to seek out truth themselves. Because whether it makes their heads swell with knowledge or with fury, the one thing we all know is that we are right. You feel pretty strongly about this subject I just barely brushed on. My feelings aren't important. No one's are. When it comes to facts, we live in their world. As such, nothing else need factor into our pursuit of understanding them, which is what's most important. Understanding facts is most important. Correct. To what end? I beg your pardon? Well, for example, my thinking and my tinkering result in the betterment of mankind, and so, therefore, of people's feelings. Especially mine. Are you saying you elevate people's feelings with mobile jail cells? Hmm. Let's go to the back. Do you want to see something kind of scary? Here they are. The most exciting backroom wine barrels this side of the Hudson. Oh, this is something. This is where you sleep. Excuse you. Eh, don't be ashamed. This is a nice one. Holds so many useful work tools. Like what? This tarp I never use? Hmm. Huh. Looks like a hidden doorway. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? Voila. 
Like I said, I'm moving into biology. So I had to get blood samples to study, obviously. Willing participants only, at least those who were alive when the samples were extracted. But, but take a look at this, look at what I found. Jumping this quickly into biology. Shouldn't you just be patient? Patience? I'm already 35. There's no time to be patient. Here, come here, closer at the desk. Why don't you go into the hidden room? Take a closer look around. Only if you come with. I'll be right behind you. I know it's funny to have experiments sitting out in the open like this, but the reality is it's not so different from my other work. It's just a little more organic than mechanic. Is that the reality? Or are you just making it reality? Here, look at the Petri dish. Do you see that discoloration? Oh, I do. What on earth is that? This sample has an infection that gobbles up red blood cells. I isolated it with a dye. Thought to be incurable, they say. Until now. Yes! Good lord. Do you see that, detective? That son of a bitch bacteria is gone! No discoloration means no dye means no death. You really can do it. Scary, huh? One man with each foot in both sides of science. How do you do it? What, the cure? It's just trial and error and trial and error. No. How do you make yourself into something you're not? How do you just will your own talents into existence? <sighs> Come closer to me. Nose to nose. I wonder if Gordon knows about this little space. It makes me uneasy. With all these outsiders coming and going, it feels like one of them is going to jump out of hiding. Anything can happen on Halloween night. People expect it, but they don't do anything to get ahead of it. <sighs> For some reason, they never have. Found something. Remy, you said Kenneth had his blood drained? You know it. What if someone did it with this? Philip twisted around, holding this metropolis-looking device the size of a sawed-off shotgun. Metal body, it had four glass capsules, and two fang-like needles at the end. Perfect for sucking blood. Philip was innocent, and my cravings vanished to the point of clear enough thought that I could muster the words. Oh, holy shit! The raised metal on the side looks like a zigzag. The letters. V. M. What company has the initials VM? I take a breath, and I say loudly and proudly, I am Victor Moreau, and I am a biologist. Say it! You're asking me to say the same, but with my name. Not the same with just your name. You know that! Say what you're going to achieve, and not trying to achieve, going to achieve. I am Cletus Willow, and I will catch the Manhattan murderer. No, you don't believe that. Believe it! I am Cletus Willow, and I will catch the Manhattan Murderer! That's damn right! Wait, your first name is Cletus? Uh, I, uh, yes. I, I didn't beg you for one. It's just uh, the hick farmer I lifted this barn off of was named Cletus. I, I love it, though. No, of course. I love that, too. Because we can be whatever we want, no matter who we are or what our name is. <laughs> you know, I kind of see it actually, Cletus. Yes, I'm going to go now. <laughs> okay, uh, no, it's great meeting you and you can be whatever you want. Cletus. I'm gonna go right away. Can I have that? Thanks. VM, VM. Can your body run on adrenaline when it doesn't have any blood? I'm writing from the closet to tell you that when you get this letter, I'll have the answer to that and so much more. Remy must be really going to town on himself up there. Oh, forgive me, Miss Burke. I didn't know you were still staying with us. You're not alone in that, Jess. Any uh, kids rapping at your door for treats tonight? We don't really do much of that around here. Most families travel further upstate. Most families? But are the people up there the same as over here? Guess I wouldn't know for sure. Sorry to bother you. Wanna sit with me? I, I wouldn't mind if you wouldn't. 
Jess, if the person asks, they want you to. People like you, whether you refuse to believe it or not. So grow a backbone already and drink this booze with me. Okay. Thanks, Sadie. <laughs> you gotta clink glasses first. Sorry, I got nervous. I understand that feeling. You do? No, I don't get socially anxious. More like socially disappointed. That makes me socially anxious. And maybe while you're off guard, I can ask you why everyone just stinks everywhere I go. Uh, I... I don't know that. You seem real clever and interesting to talk to. Did you not get on with city folk? You can tell me. There's nothing to tell. I suppose I just assumed when I saw you singing the other night. I'm sorry about that. I wouldn't have joined in if I knew you were there. I still would have if you weren't there, but... I guess, uh... I just wish I didn't have to be spifflicated to get on with other people. Or for them to get on with me. Oh, I, I was gonna say we don't have to be drinking when talking together, but I guess... Yeah, here we are. <laughs> well, to heck with these beverages then. We can still have fun with our minds clear. Really now? Really, I have all the answers. I can prove it. To everyone who I am, I'll prove it to Willow herself. Uh, to Willow myself, that I can put all the pieces together. We have some puzzles in the closet. And all those pieces lead back to one culprit, one killer, Randall Tribb. Oh shit, that's Randall Tribb. He's dead, and his neck looks like no blood. It all makes perfect sense, finally. Because I am Detective Willow, and I have cracked this case wide open. Happy Halloween. The Night Star Spectres, Part 3. Written and directed by Max Workmeister. Music by Sean Kelly and Brendan Kelly, courtesy of Empress Records. Starring Henry Kiley as Remy, Ryan M. Ciro as Detective Willow, Brenda Holliday as Jessica, Reginald West as Philip, Josiah Robinson as Randall Tribb, Allison Taylor as Greta, Autumn Harrison as Sadie, Susan Abbey as Raina, Wolf Reigns as Derek Blink, Max Workmeister as Moreau, and Alexandra Landau as your presenter. Till next time.